Hi Pop-Tarts, it's me. Thank you so much for all of your lovely comments and messages and emails and just overall encouragement as a result of the last video that I did. I know it was quite a raw video and it came from a very real place. For me it was kind of like made at a point of urgency in my life and people responded to it really nicely and I really appreciate it and I also spoke to a lot of people in my life um, I just gave them sort of the breakdown of how I was feeling and the issues I was going through and there as well I got loads and loads of help, I got people coming to me with opportunities for things I could do that I really wanted to do. Um, I just got people telling me that I'm underestimating myself and I should take the risk and just think about all the other risks that you've taken in your life and how they've paid off and it just made me feel very refreshed and rejuvenated at a time in my life where I think I really was coming to a very stark realisation and needed some kind of backup, some kind of reassurance from people who know me or at least some aspects of me. And it was really nice to receive that. And I'm, I'm not even sure that I, I knew that that was what I was looking for. But when it came down to it, it was the thing that helped me most about making the video. So thank you very much. And I just want to say as a quick aside, the reason that I take so long to respond to YouTube comments, the reason that I normally leave it four to six weeks before I respond, is because I've noticed since I've been using YouTube that it's really difficult to get notifications for all of your comments. Quite often you'll only get notifications for the first few, and if somebody responds after a couple of days or whatever, you don't get notifications for that. So I normally like to leave it for quite some time until I'm sure that I'm probably going to be able to respond to everybody who replied. Like obviously months down the line somebody might reply to something and I won't get a notification but ordinarily I find that four to six weeks is about enough time for most people to get their initial comments out and then I can comment on them in one fell swoop so it's probably not too useful for people who are asking me questions um, I, I get quite a few questions about tarot about decks and about different aspects of learning and I suppose it's not helpful for those people to have to wait four to six weeks for an answer but that is why I tend to leave it so long it's just the notification issue I just don't get told that often by YouTube when I have new comments and I feel bad about leaving people hanging. So, but I, I am planning on responding to the comments to that particular video tonight because as I said a lot of them really did touch me and a lot of them helped me very much so thank you. Just before I continue, I've noticed that obviously you can only see the top part of this jumper. Um, it doesn't just say London, it says London, Paris, Moscow and it was a present from my sister. I've spent a lot of time in all three of those cities, uh, I've lived in two of those cities, so I guess it was just her little way of saying, hey, you like these three cities, have this jumper, and I totally love it. But yeah, it's kind of, there's a cut-off point, but yeah, there are, there are other cities as well. <laughs> So what did I want to say? Um, okay, well, there's been a massive, massive shift, obviously. The last video kind of illustrated that, and this is kind of going to be a vlog thing. So if that's not the kind of thing that you're interested in, then, you know, it's totally... I won't, I won't be offended if you don't watch this. But, yeah, there's been a massive shift. There's been a big change for me. Ever since that day with the ravens and the talk with my boss, I've had a lot going on inside. I've had a lot to get to grips with. And I've had to tell myself, you know, I have a lot more freedom than I tell myself that I do. I've put myself in a position in my life where I have the degree of freedom that I do have. I have no mortgage, I have no debts, I have no credit card, I have no car, I have um, no children. I've always wanted to feel free in as many ways as possible and I'm not saying that that should equal freedom for anybody else but for me personally I like to be freewheeling and kind of like holy rolling and I don't really want to be too tied down in the material sense. I want to be able to just go wherever my nose takes me and follow my heart and I don't like to have too many responsibilities which would tie me to one spot because I feel I'm still in that place in my life where I'm developing very quickly. I'm quite an artistic person which means I'm also kind of quite chaotic a lot of the time and quite temperamental, not in a horrendous way, but just kind of, I like to uh, level myself out, I like to check in with myself, I like to see how I'm feeling. So I, I, it kind of is the me show in a lot of ways, and I think in your 20s for a lot of people it's the same. It's that part of your life where you're finding yourself and you're focusing on what you may really want to stick with and do, but you're not entirely sure what that is yet, or you've got some parts of the jigsaw, but the rest of it isn't quite put into place. So that's where I am and as a result of planning for that and planning for kind of like the eventuality that I might wish to live in another country or you know I, I might change my mind on a certain thing at any given moment, I have given myself a lot of freedom, a lot of material freedom 
And as a result of that, it made me realise that I'm not actually trapped into this job that I, I really am finding is taking its toll on my soul. I'm not as trapped as I think I am. There are options. There are things that I can do. There are ways that I can work around it. There are ways that I can go part time. There's flexibility, which wouldn't have been there if I might have taken my life down another road. But because I've afforded myself that flexibility and I don't have a lot of other responsibilities on me that prevent me from giving up the job immediately, I have in fact given up the job immediately. I worked my last day of notice yesterday and I am now a free agent. Do not panic, I have some fingers in some pies, some things are happening. Um, in fact, I applied for one opportunity a few days ago, which is completely in alignment with what I want to be doing, with writing, with personal development, with coaching and stuff. And that has proved to be fortuitous. I was told today that I have been accepted and that I will be given my first assignment soon. So I'm really excited about that. I'm not going to talk about it yet, but it will come up in future videos, what I'm doing and how I'm getting on with that. And there are other things as well. I've been given a few opportunities from friends. I've been given... Um, you know, just like different roads I can go down, different directions that people might think I want to take. I have friends who are setting up websites or working on businesses where they need copy or they need proofreading, all the kind of thing that I want to get into. But on a deeper level, the opportunities that I've actually reached out and asked for, the opportunities that I'm going after are intentionally in complete alignment with my core principles and in complete alignment with what makes me happiest at heart level. So that's writing about eco-fashion and sustainable living and that's writing about personal development, self-help, spiritual well-being, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm intentionally trying to shape a future for myself and trying to shape ways of passing the time and ways of making money for myself that really fit in with who I am and what I want because I've taken a risk, I've jumped off the edge and there's no point in taking a risk if you're not going to use that risk and that sense of instability and that sense of what now, where now, if you're not going to do what's in complete alignment with you. So that's what I'm doing and I'm not going to compromise on that. So there are a few more things that I need to do and a few more things that I need to fit into place but at the moment I'm really happy with the way that things have gone and even though I'm scared in some sense and even though there's trepidation, I feel that there has been an incredible outer shift which has led in turn to an incredible inner shift. I mean, I do think that when you make a shift in the, what I like to call the material realm, so work, health, money, career, that kind of thing, when you have a, a shift that causes you to change something in your material realm, then of course you had to have that shift from some deeper knowledge or some deeper change or transition. But once you've actually changed that aspect of your outer realm, the inner shift gets deeper, it evolves, it moves with you, it comes with you. And that's what I'm really remembering all over again from the last time that I had some major shifts and I like moved out to Russia and did all that. Um, now I really feel like that's happening again. I feel like I've, I've really changed something in the tangible realm with regard to work and with regard to what I'm doing with my days and stuff. And as a result of that, the inner shift has been immeasurable. I'm feeling it already and it's really starting to snowball. So that's very exciting. I have a lot of spiritual plans that have come out of this shift, a lot of things coming together in my mind. It's dawning on me more and more that Beltane is going to mean something different to me this year than it has any other year. Beltane obviously is the fire festival and it's coming along in May and you know I, I, I've always loved the fact that it's the fire festival I'm a fire sign I'm not hugely into astrology but I think anyone who's anyone can tell I'm a bloody fire sign and I really have a huge connection with the element of fire and this Beltane is going to be really symbolic for me I've got a feeling that it's going to be like a phoenix rising from the flames kind of feeling and I'm going to be planning a very very lavish and complex and very deep and transcendental ritual so I'm excited about that and I'm also excited about just being freelance and trying to slot everything in the way it's going to slot in at the moment I'm excited to be able to have times during the day when I can leave my work and go for a walk because the sun is finally out in the UK yes at long last we have had some rays uh, it's still very, very cold, which I love. I am a classic winter girl, but I was really, really missing my vitamin D. I'm so glad to see the sun. So it's been a beautiful day today and I worked um, solidly until about, I went out briefly to pick up some lunch, but I worked solidly until about four o'clock and then I, I went out to see some friends. So it's been a very productive day and I'm really happy with how the first day has gone. But I did get to have that little bit of sun, which in the office environment I wouldn't. I would um, 
I would have my hours lunch, but some of it would be spent in the workplace and some of it would be spent quickly hauling ass to home to get a quick cup of tea, have a chat with my boyfriend and then come back to work. So I don't really get a chance to absorb the sun and feel, feel it on my face and just enjoy nature for that little break that I have in my working space. And when I, when I stepped outside of the door today to go on my walk to pick up some food for me and my boyfriend, I saw two ravens again. And they were bold as brass, they came right over to me. It was very exciting. And I double took, because I couldn't believe it almost, because I was having this really special moment of complete mindfulness. I wasn't focused on the past, I wasn't focused on the future, and I've been focusing a lot on the future in the last five days. I really have. I mean, yes, there has been a huge feeling of radical acceptance. Obviously, you can see from my last video, if you watched it, that was a huge moment of radical acceptance on camera, as far as I'm concerned. Just literally accepting, openly accepting as it was coming to me, the realizations that things were not right and that things needed to change. So yeah, there has been radical acceptance, but at the same point, there's been a lot of ideas coming into play with regard to what I want the future to look like, how I envision it, how I want to shape it, how I want to make my way towards it. So there's not been a lot of time for complete and total mindfulness. And today when I stepped out of the door, I just thought, right, mindfulness, this walk is about being mindful. It's about just, just simply observing, just simply being in your skin, just let go of everything. And the first thing I saw when I crossed the street was two ravens having a whale of a time. So, um, I say that because there was like a half a sandwich on the floor, but yeah, so it was amazing. I, I really feel like something's coming together for me spiritually that's been, it's been propelling itself into motion and gaining momentum since the beginning of the year, or since, no, since Samhain, since so the beginning of Witches Year, but um, it's really, really coming into being now with this outer shift. I'm really starting to feel that there's some major, major cosmic power just soaring through me. And of course, as a pantheist, I always believe that's the truth. But sometimes, my God, can I feel it? And at the moment, I really can. So I'm really excited about that. I also um, received my diploma with distinction, no less, in spiritual counselling from the UK College of Holistic Training. Um, now, I don't by any means think that it's necessary or important to have a piece of paper to be a fantastic guide who works along ethical guidelines and who counsels people and stuff like that. Um, obviously, I understand that in the professional realm, there needs to be a certain standard set, and I appreciate that. So it's kind of like a benchmark everybody can go by, and we all know that we're on roughly the same page. But obviously, there are a lot of people who are never going to go to a counsellor or a life coach because they have a certain friend that they go to or a certain person that they know they can always turn to for that objective guidance and it feels incredible and it's totally free and I appreciate that but I know that there are a lot of other people who although they have incredible support systems and although they trust friends or family members to be able to talk through the issues they do also want that objective very well thought out kind of empowerment or a certain um, focus a plan of focus put into play an action plan if you will they want to be either driven and motivated or they want to be supported and allowed to express themselves openly so that guidance can take place with a kind of uh, profound kind of basis to it. So I think there is for a lot of people a place for a spiritual counsellor or a spiritual guide as well and if you kind of want to do that and be in that realm and be in that side of things there is incredible amounts of reassurance to be placed on the the gift, I would call it, the gift of acknowledgement from somebody very learned, from somebody who has a PhD, from somebody who has a background in all these different kinds of um, therapies that you appreciate, that you've looked into, that you feel at one with, that you feel ethically um, reflect what you're doing. There's a great deal of, of reassurance in that acknowledgement from them that comes in the form of them marking your work and, you know, being with you through it and then saying, yes, you definitely are a spiritual counsellor. You know what it's all about. I'm impressed with the work and, you know, this is yours. So I feel reassured by that. And I feel like it's something that I needed to do to validate what I do with the tool of tarot. So I'm really proud of myself for that. And I didn't think it was going to feel as big as it felt. I didn't think that when it came through the door, I was going to feel quite how I felt. But actually, it was really emotionally charging for me. And it, it really made me very happy. I feel like it's going to open more doors in my heart than it's actually going to open out there in the world. And that's totally fine by me. I absolutely love that. I feel that's what it's all about. I just I feel that I needed 
to take my knowledge of tarot to the next level, not through learning anything, but through getting some confirmation of what I've already learned and where I've already been and what I'm already doing to utilize the tool to the best level that I possibly can. And, you know, it's just nice to be told that, you know, your ethics are sound, your techniques are sound, you know about transpersonal therapy, you know about psychosynthesis. Yes, you know, you are on the right path and we salute you with this piece of paper. It's really nice. So I'm really, I'm happy with myself for that. I've always loved helping people. I've always been the listening ear in my friendship groups. I've also got a long history of healthcare, volunteering and stuff like that. I won't go into all the ins and outs of everything now, but I feel like I've always been on this path towards helping people. It's always been part of who I am. I think there are a few reasons for it. Not only am I just kind of naturally inclined towards that and naturally, I suppose, like quite approachable, maybe people would think, or able to problem solve without being overtly judgmental. I think I probably show people without even trying that I have a level of empathy that can be tapped into where people can ask me to appreciate an issue from a standpoint that I may not have actually experienced in my own life or I may have been on the other side of, but I can offer like this non-judgmental space in which it's safe to be guided. And I think that I was naturally kind of made that way. My mum's the same. A lot of the women in my family are the same. But I think also my mum's journey itself has been a huge inspiration to me. And this is something that I've, you know, I've known for a long time. My mum has been through seven shades of shit and come out of the other side ever, ever stronger. And she broke a lot of negative cycles and continuing negative patterns that were going on in her family for years and years. She really broke free. She really embraced the quest towards her core being and the quest towards contentment. She didn't want to pass on the negative behaviours and the negative ways of being and the negative ways of repressing the emotional spectrum that she was given in her childhood. She wanted something better for me and my siblings. She really has been to a dark place and resurfaced from it. And watching her do that from about the age of 14, when I feel the journey really started for her, to now, I'm 28, seeing her as she is now, has given me a lot and a lot of the things that I say and a lot of the advice that I posit and a lot of the way that I guide people both professionally and personally has been injected with things that my mum has said and things guidance that my mother has posited. Uh, I read Jung because my mother read Jung. I read Jung, the biography of Carl Gustav Jung to my mother actually once when we were on holiday. She was sunbathing and I'd read it to her. Um, a lot of the books that she had on her shelf I picked up and I got into so there's been a lot of that coming from my mum. And a lot of the other reason that I, and also obviously seeing how helped she was by therapy as well, and, and by the book she was reading, and seeing how enriched she was, and seeing how much she changed, how much she flourished, that inspired me to help people with personal development and spiritual growth. The other reason is because I myself have come out the other side of something very dark. I grappled for a very long time with um, a mental health issue, which, to be frank, runs through the family. Um, and my, you know, my mum always said that it was uh, at least partially, if not wholly, inherited. And my way of dealing with that for six long years was through self harm. It was habitual. It was completely systemic. Um, it was a huge issue for me, and for a long time, I did not want to accept that. I kept it completely hidden. My mother didn't know for the first four years and she only found out by accident. I was completely isolated and subdued about it. I didn't let anybody in emotionally and the way that I let stuff out was by cutting myself. And I have a big problem with the way the media addresses self-harm and I have a problem with the way certain media outlets and certain individuals sensationalise it whilst at the same time saying that they're trying to raise awareness. So I'm very, very cagey about coming out with this, but I feel it's something that I need to say, that I found certain ways of being, certain ways of thinking, certain ways of tapping into my spiritual core, certain ways of seeing the world, in fact, even just recognising that the way I saw the world could be healing and could have an incredibly positive effect on me and wasn't just a matter of insignificance, but was in fact my own medicine. 
all of these things help me to realise that there are way more productive, creative, beautiful, communicative, all-encompassing ways of letting your pain out and using it to do something good for you and using it to bolster and strengthen and fortify you, not using it to cut yourself off from the world or not allowing it to cut you off from other people. So that's another reason why I want to help people, because I feel that certain people help me through that, but I also feel like a lot of it was about me getting in touch with the profound amount of strength that's in me as a human being. And I'm not talking about me personally, like I'm something special. I'm talking about all of us. I'm talking about the way that we perceive the issues that we go through and how we allow them to strengthen or weaken us. So that's another big reason. You know, I harnessed my inner power and I feel like I can take a look at the, you know, the roadmaps that I used and help other people out sometimes by sharing those roadmaps. It's kind of like the first pioneers that went from one side of America to the other and the way that they used to make booklets and send them back to New York, uh, writing about the pitfalls, the different ways you could go that weren't as good as other ways, the dangers, you know, follow this path and you'll get here quicker. There's a big lake, here's how to avoid that. These people, the first people to get to the West, would send these booklets and these guides back to the East so other people could try and do the same thing. And that's kind of what I feel I'm doing, if that's not too abstract. I read a lot of history. So, yeah, I feel that the next couple of weeks is going to be a lot to do with gratitude for me. I feel like I have a lot to say thank you for. And I feel like so unbelievably blessed at the moment. I just feel like I've been able to take a leap. And I've permitted myself to do that. And I feel I should love myself for that. Because ultimately that's an act of bravery. But really, in a lot of ways, the universe, I co-create my reality with the universe and the universe has given me a lot, you know, a lot of opportunities to learn, a lot of opportunities to improve myself, a lot of opportunities to find out exactly how deep my own rabbit hole goes. And I'm having a good time down there. I've already met the Mad Hatter and it might almost be time to meet up with the White Rabbit. I'm not sure. Hopefully, I'm going to come back up to the surface and see what I can build. Blessed be.